Hey, Honors Chemistry. Um, so I had some technical difficulties with my iPad, so I'm going to have to split this into two videos. So I'm going to do all the content here, and then I'm going to work out the practice problems in a separate video. So they'll be posted right under each other, and it should be pretty easy to find. So um, today we uh, looked at introducing isotopes. Isotopes are any time we've gained or lost neutrons, which changes the mass of an atom, but not its charge. Um, and when you have different types of an element that exists in the universe, you need to make sure that the average mass that appears on the periodic table is fair and accurate, and so it must be weighted. We weight it based on kind of the abundance of each of the isotopes. We looked at these two and said, okay, the difference here is really just the difference of a neutron, so the mass of these two is different, and we can identify that with Li-7, Li-6 for lithium, or we could write lithium-7 or lithium-6, or we can use the isotopic symbol. So when isotopes are unstable, sometimes they undergo decay to try to become stable. So they'll eject uh, particles or energy in order to do so. So right now, um, you should go ahead and um, pause the video, record this uh, kind of screen here that you see, um, and then you should be able to uh, re... Uh, let me start over. Pause the video, copy down this table, and then unpause the video. Go. Okay. So there's four major types of decay that can occur. We have alpha decay, beta negative decay, beta positive decay, and gamma decay. So alpha decay is um, the least dangerous of the four. It's also the biggest. So alpha decay is essentially a helium nucleus. So um, alpha decay is kind of two protons and two neutrons stuck together. And so it ejects from... Uh, a, a radioactive isotope. And so we identify it when we're looking at it in a decay equation, we identify it as a helium because that's essentially what it is. It is a uh, particle that has four total mass uh, and two of those are protons. So it is essentially a helium. Um, now beta negative is when a neutron releases a negative quark. So what we have is Protons and neutrons, I need markers that actually work. Um, protons and neutrons actually have particles inside of them. And a proton will have more particles inside of it. So a proton will have more particles inside of it that are positive, and so as a result, the overall charge of the proton particle is positive. These things inside are called quarks. Quarks. So those things inside are called quarks. Protons have more positives than negatives. They are called up-down, but I just call them positive-negative because that's kind of the easiest way to understand them. Now, neutrons... <clears throat> Neutrons are neutral because they have equal quantities of positives and negatives inside. So the overall charge of a neutron is neutral because it has positive and negative particles inside, but it has the same number. Just like a neutral atom, you have the same number of protons and electrons, and so you end up with uh, a neutral charge. Now, going back to this decay, we see that um, beta negative decay is when a neutron releases a negative quark and turns into a proton. So what that means, I'm going to do it in a different color. Let's see, does this one work? Yes. What that means is a neutron ejects, make the screen big again. Neutron ejects a negative, and so then what you're left over with is more positives on the inside than negatives. So this now can turn into a proton. Now that's obviously going to change the atomic number. So in beta negative decay, you release this very, very small negative particle. It is in the equation written as an electron because it essentially is the same mass and charge as an electron. Um, so you release this negative particle that makes the inside of the neutron now uh, more positive than it was. It turns into a proton, and that changes the atomic number. 
Now, the other one is beta positive decay. In beta positive decay, similarly, spark of work? Yes. Similarly, the proton will uh, release a positive particle. So if this is our current proton, I added another negative quark just to make this work. Um, but they would have a situation where it would release one of its positive uh, quarks. Doo -doo, boop, boop, boop. And so it's released a positive quark down here. And so what you see now inside is that it's positives, two positives, two negatives. So this is no longer a proton. This is a neutron. And the charge is now neutral. Okay, that charge is positive, by the way. Um, so the charge is now neutral because it released that. So this is beta, ne uh, beta positive, and it's written as an electron symbol in E. It has no mass and a charge of plus one. And on this one, this is beta negative. It releases a negative particle with no mass. And so beta positive, beta negative, these are the two that are a little on the tricky side. Um, but the basic there is beta positive is when a proton turns into a neutron by releasing a positive to even out their positives and negatives, get rid of some of its positivity. And beta negative is when a neutron releases a negative, and that now uh, leads to an imbalance between its positives and negatives, and so you end up with a proton. The last type is uh, gamma. Gamma has no mass. It has no charge. It's just an electromagnetic wave. That is uh, the primary uh, radiation that people are concerned about with nuclear decay and nuclear reactions because it is very, very high energy. It can pass through anything, and it can be rather dangerous. All right. So uh, here's an example of alpha decay. You'll notice that we started with uranium-235, the mass-235, with 92 protons, and it has undergone alpha decay. We know that because over here we see an alpha particle, a helium uh, with four total mass and two of the um, particles, uh, proton, charged particles, positive particles. Oof, struggled through that one. So literally, this came out of the uranium. So the mass, the four total mass, came out of the 235. That's what leads us to have another product of 231 as a mass, because 235 minus 4 is 231. The helium, or excuse me, the two protons came out of the 92, and that's changed. So remember I said that there's only really uh, one situation where proton number can change, and that's nuclear decay. This is an example, but you do notice it changed from uh, uranium to thorium. It changed from element 92 to 90. So it did not just become a uranium with 90 protons. It changed to a different element. In beta negative decay, we see our uranium starting here. We know it's beta negative decay because we see the beta negative particle here. Another way we know is that the proton number went up. So that means a neutron released a negative now is positive the proton number went up. This particle has no mass, so we see no change in the mass. So uranium changed into neptunium here because it released a negative quark from one of its neutrons. That neutron transitioned into a proton and is now a proton. Gamma decay, now if this was beta positive, this would have flipped the other direction. I would see a positive particle here, and this would have gone from 92 down to 91. So in beta positive decay, proton number goes down. In beta negative decay, proton number goes up. Gamma decay, neither of them change. We just notice that gamma decay has occurred. So here's a couple examples. Um, I am going to work out these examples in the other video. So watch that video to get these examples just so that you are certain uh, that you understand how to do it. Um, but I just can't write on this screen, and it will bug me if that I can't. All right, so let's get into our last thing. So we said that average atomic mass is essentially um, the average... Uh, the weighted average of all of the isotopes that exist for that substance. So here in this diagram, we see that um, carbon is identified as carbon-12 and carbon-13. Those are the two big carbons. Carbon-12 is 98.90%. Carbon-13 is 1.10%. And so when we calculate that, we need to take the mass of each of the isotopes and multiply it by its percent abundance, much like you would take a score in your grade book and multiply it by the weighted average for that category. So I would take 12 times uh, 0.9890, 13.003 times 
0.0110 because I'm changing it out of percents. And then I add those two together and that's the overall total. So let's, um, this example I am gonna work out on the other um, video. So make sure you switch over to that video to watch that. And I believe that the rest of this is gonna be the same way. So the rest of this will be uh, worked out in the other video. So we're gonna stop this here, switch over to the other, other video so we can practice that nuclear decay and then practice average atomic masses. All right.